Welcome to the Northeast Kingdom Voice. I'm your host, Scott Wheeler. Today's guest is Gene Teshier of Derby. He's been on here before. Uh, he's been on as a Vietnam veteran. He's been on here as Santa Claus. And he's also touched upon his life as the founder of Border Hoop. Well, today he's on to talk about the end of an era in the world of Gene Teshier. Uh, he is now retired as a bus driver. That's one job, Gene, that I have never aspired to be. Did you know? Did you need Valium to do that job, or did you just did you learn to remain calm? Well, you know, uh, being in the basketball program for twenty five years around kids, you got to uh, you got to learn what the kids are. Kids are kids. I was a kid once and, and I used to tell him, I said, whatever you do on the bus, I did babies 25 years ago on the bus when I was a kid. So right. uh, you just had to um, pick your battles with them. You know, right. the greatest school kids were real good though. Uh, one of the last few years I've been driving for junior high and that's a different breed all its own. Did they ever test you? Oh, they test me all right, those kids. <laughs> well, you know, I say that it must have been tough for you, but you know, you're you're a, a combat veteran of Vietnam, so I suppose they couldn't show you anything that is as bad as what you got to see in Vietnam. Oh, exactly, exactly. But you know, after a while, you know, it it wears you down. I guess it was time to get done. You know. So when did how? When did you begin and why? I I don't, I don't know. I was getting right close to retirement and wanted to do something. And that stuck in my mind. I said, well, I've been, you know, um, um, doing kids basketball for so many years. I said, why don't I drive them around? So I started out driving the preschool in Derby here. That's why I started. And I had more fun with those other guys, you know sing songs with them, go to the beach, and it was a lot of fun. Then, so I started subbing for Charleston Derby and uh, Newport, and, and then Derby, uh, uh, a route opened up, so I took it, and, and I retired, and I just worked part-time with my bus job. And How many years did you do that? 17 years. 17 years. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I think we all remember um, bus drivers from our youth. Uh, like I remember, you know, the famed uh, uh, Wendy Buchanan, the much beloved, at least amongst the uh, passengers. So Wendy, uh, then, uh, oh, Ralph, uh, Ralph Perkins. Uh, yes. he, was a, he was an outstanding uh, guy and um, you know one guy I remember and his daughter tells me he wouldn't probably last the day now uh, just because of the change of uh, change of the times is uh, Eric Hammond um, you know because he he ran a pretty tight boat or I should say bus yeah. um, but I you know I, I can think back and then there was like uh, Roy Sanborn um, and then Ira Bachelor, and he ran a pretty tight one too. Um, but uh, I think for some reason they all stick out in our minds. Do you remember any from growing up, or did you take the bus? No, I my bus driver was Mr. Barrett, huh? Lee Barrett. That was related to your wife. Yeah, that was my late. That was Penny's uh, grandfather. Now, yeah. was he that had, he had one leg? And he drove the bus, and he used to he did he could change a tire. He was he was a nice bus driver, right. yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah, I don't think uh, if I recall right, I don't even think Penny knew him. I think he was 
maybe I'm wrong, but I think he was gone before she arrived on the scene or that, or before, at least before she knew she'd arrived on the scene. Yeah. But, yeah, um, he, he wasn't my bus driver, you know, and of course, when I lived, you know, when I was in school in Brownington, you know, that's when my bus driver was. To yeah. high school, you found your own way, you know. Okay. I, I can't yeah. remember riding a school bus going to Orleans High School. I can't recall riding a school bus. And were bus drivers, like, was was Lee different than you? Like, could could he do things that maybe you couldn't? No, you know, he was he was kind of a laid back man. He wasn't, you know, he was strict, but there was only 10, 15 kids on bow, if that. He just had a small van, you know? It wasn't a big school bus like today. Okay. So there wasn't too many kids, you know? As far as rules, there was rules on my bus, but I was, I was, they always told me my rules were different than anybody else. I, I allowed kids had their feet in the aisles. It didn't bother me. I, like, I wanted the kids to have fun on the bus and have a good social thing with each other. If they got loud, I used to turn my lights on. That meant quiet down. But as far as uh, discipline, I think I rode up one kid in the 17 years I drove. You know, um, you could ride them up and that's about all it was. Nothing ever happened of it, you know? They, they, they couldn't give a kid, you know, if you kick the child off the bus, he had to find a way to get to school. And if he didn't have a way, he'd get back on the bus. So, you know, the discipline ain't like what it was when I was growing up, you know? But we, uh, we used to sing song. I used to always turn on the radio pretty loud. Once in a while, I would stop the bus side the road because I did mostly dirt roads and just have the kids get out and dance, you know, just just to have fun. And uh, I really missed driving that grade school. That was my fun years, you know. I drove for New Derby for 15 years. And you know, the, you were talking, you were saying about getting the kids out. And as I said, I think everybody loved uh, Ralph Perkins as a driver, uh, and just he I, was a heck of a guy. Yeah, but um, I, I remember one time. I don't know if you can do it these days. Is he was driving? I think for the junior high, and people were being a little rambunctious, and uh, they wouldn't listen, and so he pulled in. I believe this. My believe my younger brother was on this bus when it was pouring out. So he let them all out in the Elks parking lot, let them get drenched, and then put them back on and asked them if they'd cooled off yet. And um, would that wouldn't happen today, would it? No, you maybe would get in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> but you know he did it with love though. Um, and I think everybody, even the ones acting up, probably uh, uh, went on to really appreciate them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, you know, uh, kids, you know, the, 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 th the kids were great. The parents were the ones that were all pain in the butt. You know? <laughs> How's that? Well, you know, I mean, my little boy wouldn't do that. And my little girl wouldn't do that, you know. And, you know, and I used to, you know, and I used to stick to my rules, you know, and I, I, you know, they would say, you're too early. You're picking up my kids too early. I said, no, you're late getting at the bus stop. Then when they say you're late, I said, no, you got here too early. I wouldn't let them get the upper hand, you know, okay. and but some of the parents, you know, they, I had a couple over the years that they just wanted a child to be dropped off and she was a preschool and they wanted her to be dropped off. I said, well, you gotta be there. Oh, I just live up the hill. You can see my house from here. I said, if it's 10 below zero and you're not home, she's gonna be cold. No, nope. I want them dropped off. I heard dropped off. I said, well, I'm not dropping her off. She took me to the school board and the school board said, well, I guess you gotta drop her off. I said, no, I'm not still gonna drop her off. My handbook says, if I don't feel comfortable, dropping the child off, I don't have to. 
Right. Well, I guess you don't have to. Then. Well, she got madder than heck. She picked up a girl every day. She didn't drop. I didn't drop her off. She wouldn't. She didn't ride the bus again. And last year, she started riding my bus at junior high, and I recognized her. And yeah. she's growing up quite a bit, you know. And I said, uh, "Your mom home?" She just kind of chuckled and said, "Yeah, she is." But I mean, <laughs> this is what you dealt with. We we were responsible for those kids from the time they get on the bus to the time they get off. And it's all right to drop them off. I'm home. What if you're not home? You're going to blame me for it. I was the one responsible, but you couldn't get parents to understand that. You know, just drop them off. I don't know. So they made a rule in Derby if they were less than the sixth grader, you couldn't drop them off without seeing a parent in the window or a parent being near the road. And I thought that was great. You, you know, one thing I've noticed over the years, um, and I just don't know if it changed in your period of time, but back when I was growing up, you know, I'm getting to be that age now, nearing 60, back when that I now picked up that phrase, back when I was a kid, is you used to have pickups, you know, you used to have spots where the kids congregated you know, whether it be every quarter mile, half mile or whatever. Now you're following a bus and it's every house, I think, that has a kid. Did you see, were, did you experience that change as a driver? Yes, I see the, the greatest school was picked up every house. The junior high was, like you said, certain spots, you know, like me. 15, 20 kids at one stop. I had four different stops that had 10, 15 kids. But the grade to school, everyone was picked up at the house. You know? Was that like that when you were a kid? It wasn't, no, was it? No. Yeah, no. Um, but like I say, I had only 15 kids on my bus, so there wasn't many. But no, I, I can't recall most of them, you know, like the Davinos, there used to be four or five kids that got on there. You know, and the moors, you know. So, you know, it was always four or five kids at each house. Right. Uh, so uh, uh, when you started, you did what did you have for a warning system that you were stuck? Like, did you have the blinking lights or also the, the stop sign that came out? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it was the the digital like today. It didn't. We didn't. I didn't have the arm like they had back in the olden days. You know, I of course I've never driven a bus, and I would rather do just about anything other than that. But I, I just am as, as an observer have never seen somebody pass a bus with blinking lights on and such. You as a bus driver, does that? Oh my god. Does that happen often? All the time. When I, when I drove junior high this year, I used to have three, four a day, uh, three, four a week. And we have cameras on the buses now, on the, junior, on the high school got cameras. So you take a picture and then you read the license place. Unless the license place is dirty, Oh, it's peeling off like most of the Vermont plates are doing. And then we give it to an officer and he takes and issues him a ticket. But at the end, we had to like give him the video and he had to show the video to the person. And some of them say, well, you didn't give us one and I want a, a, a long enough one to stop. Well, what do you mean? The red light came on. Well, what, what other warning can I give you? If we waited for every car to stop before we turn on our lights, we were never getting our kids picked up or dropped off. And most of them, when the yellow lights come on, they like to speed up because they don't want to stop. And I used to get three, four a week easy. And, really good. you know, everybody's in a hurry. And you know, and, and I was lucky each time no kid was crossing the road. So, you know, that's that's the whole thing. You know what, going through old newspaper clippings, um, 
especially in the early days, days of earlier days of school buses, I could think of two or three kids that got killed getting off the bus right here in Orleans County, just going yeah. through old newspapers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, did you actually, uh, so the, did, do you think the kids knew, even though they had the right of way, did they actually look? No, or... see, I had them a single. I used to give them the thumbs up. And they did not cross the road till I give them thumbs up. The junior high, I couldn't get those guys to understand. They would just run across. But the little kids, I had a sign, I'd give them the thumbs up. And if somebody looked like they were going to run the lights, I would honk my horn and they run back where they were. And I think one time happened in Derby Line. Yeah, where the custom comes up over there for custom. I was stopped and the kid was on the sidewalk. And as he was walking towards my bus, a Canadian car came in between me and him on the right Ooh. side. Ooh. The, mo <laughs> the mother threw a water bottle at him, <laughs> at the car. And she hollered to the custom officer, and he said, I can't do nothing about it. What do you mean you can't do nothing? I'm sure you I can. I mean, he passed me on the right side while the kid was getting on. The kid is always, is always dragging his butt. It's a good thing, you know? It's, yeah. And that was a bad place right there. They, the Canadians, I guess, they don't stop for red lights. Every time I drop off in front of that community bank, Somebody had to run the lights all the time, you know? And it was, it's always the same cars, you know? Uh, did you ever drive for the high school? I drove, um, I drove one day for the high school. I filled in for somebody, one route. You know, I went down on the late road and to North Troy. But that was the only time I drove for the high school. Now, did they, so that one time, did you find that, uh, that by then you're actually getting your senses back because junior high, let's be real, you're testing yeah. every boundary there is. Yeah, I think the junior high was, uh, I think is, uh, that's why they sent them all together in two grades up here, junior high. <laughs> right. You know, <laughs> nobody else wants them. <laughs> um, that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. They, they wasn't all bad. All you need is two, three bad apples, you know? And they they just know how to push your buttons, you know? And uh, so, course, you know, I didn't have a monitor. And at one time I had 72 kids, you know? And then they dropped it down to 55, and that was enough. Now, being a... Being that we've changed so much, some for the good, some to the for the bad as a society, have what you used to say and do as a bus driver changed over the years because you don't want to hurt little Johnny's feelings? Or has that changed the way you interact with somebody, particularly if they're doing something that is wrong? Yeah, you know, you... Uh... Of course, we got cameras on the bus. You know, anything they do, you know, they can look back on the cameras. So, you know, you had to kind of keep try to uh, be control what you were doing. Had to watch, you know, you made sure you didn't swear at them. Uh, but a lot of times, you know, my monitor was, you know, Jen, she would ask one of the childs to move and he wouldn't move. So she would holler, Jeannie, I can't get him to move. And I said, so I stopped the bus. Put my four ways on, shut the bus off, pull my keys out, walk back, and I said, you got to move. He said, I'm not moving. And I said, well, there's two ways and you're going to move. By me grabbing you by your ears and moving you, or you're going to move on your own. And usually they get up. I didn't need to touch them, but had to do that little threat, you know. But uh, you always had one or two that put you to the, to the test. You know, they would say, you can't touch me, you know. And there were just a few like that. Then, I can tell you, that would not have worked very well for that kid. For those kids back when I was in elementary school and had Eric Hammond, 
for a, <laughs> for a bus driver that that just would not have yeah. uh, have cut it. Um, but you know, some of the parents, I mean, some of the kids, the way they acted. You talk to their parents for about five minutes, you know why they're acting the way they do. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know? And and some of the parents would say, he acts up on the bus, you let me know. I'll take care of it. So I had parents like that back me up all the time. And tell me, you said something that uh, sparked my interest. It's unrelated to bus driving, but you went to uh, Brownington. Did you have Mrs. Hinton for a uh, for a teacher? No. Okay. No, I Mrs. had Miss I had Mrs. Davenall. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Swanson and right. Paul Montague. Right. And that's, oh, three. that's that's all I had. And I had one more, I can't remember her name. because uh, when I went to school I, I couldn't talk English at all. Right. So Mrs. Davenel was the closest thing to talking French to her, and she couldn't talk French that good. <laughs> now that you you mentioned about you're going to pick the kid up by his ear if he didn't move. The reason I asked you about Mrs. about if you if you had Mrs. Hinton, my my uh, one of my older brother in laws had her in Brownington, and uh, she, he said she'd pick you right up by the ear and. They'll carry you across the uh, room, you know, something you're not going to be doing today. That's since well, you went see, to Brown. See, when I went to Brownington, the teacher had fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grades in one right. room. And, and, and then the school at the village down where Mrs. Hunt lived, it was first, second, third, and fourth. Yeah. So there was two teachers there. God, I wish I could measure what that little teacher was. And in Bramington Center, we had only one teacher for all four grades. Right, right. So, and then when we moved to the new school, uh, I went there one year, and that's when they had different teachers, in different classes. Then you every class had thing, a teacher. You know, one thing I hear about from bus drivers, um, there is one part of bus driving that, especially in later years, I've heard a number of them is the politics of being a bus driver, as in from the administration. I've heard repeatedly that some people have just said, this is enough. And it wasn't because of the kids. It wasn't because of the parents, but it's more because of the administration. Did you ever run into that? Oh, yeah. The administration, you know, it's, you know, I had a principal. Derby Lyme, she's gone. Thank goodness, baby. Now Derby can get back on its feet. But when she first came in, she told me to give pom pom to the kids that were that were real good on the bus. I said, What do you mean? If a kid is good, give him this pom pom as a reward. I said, I'm not going to reward a kid for being good. So she said, Well, you got to do this. This was my first day I met her. So that night, I said to myself, I made up my mind what I was going to do. So the next day, she said, do you give any pom-poms away? I said, yeah, I gave them all away. She said, what do you mean? I said, they're all at the bus stop. I thought, I thought it was a good job, so I gave them all one. Well, she wasn't very happy with that. But some of these administration, they would say, you got to you gotta reward the kid that's good. To me, you shouldn't have to reward a kid that's good. I'm sorry. I'm from the old school, you know. <laughs> A kid is good if he's not good. But I'm not going to, what are you going to do to the kids that are always good? What are you going to give them? And, and then when you would report a kid that he's doing something, they wouldn't do nothing. Right. You know, uh, they would come out and say, uh, little Johnny here has been bad in school all day. He's got to sit in the front seat. I said, he's not sitting in the front seat. She said, what do you mean? I said, he's good on my bus. And he's going to sit where he wants. Oh, no, he's got to sit in the front seat. I said, whatever. After she gets off, he sits where, you know, don't punish him on the bus because he's bad in school. You know, it's, they're always trying to, you know, run the bus the way uh, administration, you know, they don't back you up enough. They don't. 
Okay, we only have about five more minutes left. Well, one the, another chapter of your life, just real quick, is it seems like you're going to have more time on your hands because you've become kind of like known as the, especially during COVID, as the uh, picnic table king. You have a woodworking shop, Jeans yeah. uh, Woodworking. What is it called? Yeah, Jeans Custom Furniture. And and you really ham during the. Uh, during COVID, especially for the restaurants, you hammered out picnic tables. Does this give you more time to work in the shop? Yeah, yeah, it does. You know, and because driving bus, you got to leave at two in the afternoon to go get your bus. Like this, I don't have to leave now, you know? And yeah, that year of the COVID, I did 200 tables that year. Right. Oh, so, how did that change your life on the bus too? COVID must have been a pain for you, wasn't it? Yeah, I still wear a mask because I got, you know, I got bad lungs. So I wear, I still wore a mask on it. Right. Yeah. So that was um, kind of a pain. It was kind of what? I was kind of a pain, you know, wearing a mask, but it had to be what it had to be. Right. So, uh, so you might have retired now from bus driving, but you're, your shop is, from what I watch you on Facebook, seems to be up and right, uh, up and going and doing great. Yeah, yeah. I'm busy enough. Yeah, so. Oh, and one last thing, of course, now you can start planning ahead a little more for your big, massive light display. I suspect yeah. it's the largest in uh, the Northeast Kingdom. Uh, does this uh, got any big got any big things happen in there? Oh, I got a few new things, you know. Right, and but, is uh, that all wait and see? Yeah, wait and see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know what is? We're nearing. Uh, we're already in July, which means August is here, and it won't be long. And it'll be snowing out, and I'm sure yeah. some of the listeners are really enjoying me saying yeah. that, but. I start I start putting it up in September. Oh. When I when I mow my lawn for the last time, I start doing the lawn. It takes like my wife and I about 30 days to put it up, sometime longer. You know? It, it, it's probably a lot less fun to take down. Yeah, it's quicker to take it down. But less fun. Yeah. Okay. Well. We only have a couple more. We only have like one or two minutes. What are, what are your final words on life in general about being or being a bus driver? Well, if you're being a bus driver, you can't you can't be a bus driver and take it as a job. You got to like kids to, book, to drive bus. If you take it as a job, then you're going to you're, you're going to be a bus driver that's going to holler at the kids all the time. And I found out by hollering at the kids. It doesn't work because they get hollered at enough to home. So I never hollered at a kid, never. I just didn't believe in it because they ain't gonna, they're gonna shut you out anyways. So we just, you know, gotta like kids to drive bus. You don't have to, it, 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 it works good if you do. Right, and, and for Christmas, I know you, uh, you even livened it up, dressed as Santa, lit up your bus and everything. Yeah. Decorated the bus. You know, and our junior high even liked it. You know, I was surprised. There's still kids at high, you know? Oh, sure, sure. You know? Okay. Uh, I want to thank you for uh, coming on, coming on again. Uh, it's always great to have you. Uh, I know, uh, I, I believe one of the last times uh, you were on, we were talking uh, with uh, we're talking about your life as Santa Claus, and we also had Santa Winston Carbono on, yes, uh, who yes. was also a combat veteran of Vietnam. Yeah. But he's he's set sail for the other side now, and uh, he's he's playing uh, Santa behind the Golden Gates. But and you take you take just one more thing. Yesterday, I don't know you wasn't here, but the parade in Derby was super. But when they flew over with the jets, that made that parade what it was, what the 4th of July is about. It was awesome. We're going down and they flew right over us and just kind of glided us away. Both, and there was four of them. It was awesome. 
Awesome. Good. Good. That was okay, a highlight of the parade. Good. Thank you for coming on and thank you for your service. Yeah, you're welcome, Scott. And you take care. And thank you to the viewers for tuning in to another segment of the Northeast Kingdom Voice. <laughs>